Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Eugene Roddenberry coming to you from Los Angeles, California. Uh, I'm actually in my mother's home in uh, Bel Air. So I was asked to do a little video for you guys, and this is going to be slightly unorthodox and unusual, and um, I, I hope you guys enjoy it for what it is. Uh, it's just a minute or two of me sort of telling you about my life and uh, what it's like here at the uh, Roddenberry residence. So uh, if you'll bear with me, I've got my, my morning head on, um, but if you'll bear with my unshaven appearance, I'll, uh, I'll take you around. You know, let me actually start by taking you on a tour of my father's office. Uh, this is something that no one really ever gets to see except for those who come to the house and happen to walk by it. But, um, well, you know what? I'm going to tell you more when I get in there. Let's, let's go up. Let's go to the office. So we're in my father's office. Uh, most of this office is exactly the way it was. It's been this way for, God, how long has it been? He passed away in 91. So we're talking roughly 17, 18 years. Uh, it stayed exactly the same. Um, some of the books have been taken off of the shelves. Of course, the computer has been updated, things like that. But I wanted to sort of show you guys what it was like when he was here. And uh, right now I'm sitting in his chair, but I will get up and show you guys around. So come check it out with me. Let's start in this corner. For those of you who don't know, this is a picture of the Gene Roddenberry building on the Paramount lot in Hollywood, California. This was erected, I believe it was dedicated to him in 1991, and he and I, and many people were there for the dedication. Um, this was, I guess, a number of months before his passing. And um, it's a beautiful building. He never worked in it. No one from Star Trek, the funny thing is, is no one from Star Trek, to my knowledge, at least of the production side of things, has ever worked in that building. Uh, <laughs> so there you go, very beautiful. Moving on to um, here. Here we have a great shot of my father and the Enterprise 1701D. Uh, I, I know my father loved this picture because, you know, he loved the original series, but he killed himself on it, and he had to deal with so many politics and bullshit. Oh, excuse the cussing, but, uh, oh, well, this isn't, you know, rated anything, so I'm just going to say it like it is. He didn't have to deal with any of the crap um, that he had to deal with on the original series for the next generation. I mean, it was not an easy thing, but he had a lot more creative control and got to make the next generation the way he wanted to. And what's really interesting is that, you know, the people who have always found differences and distinctions between the two series, which there certainly are, um, you know, Captain Picard was no uh, Captain Kirk. And I've talked to a number of people about the differences, and they've basically said that, you know, Captain Picard was a maturing of Kirk and Gene Roddenberry. You know, the kind of man and the belief my father had in the 1960s uh, evolved, changed, and grew to the kind of beliefs he had in the late 80s and early 90s. And Picard represented those matured beliefs. And that's why the next generation, you know, for the most part, was the way it was. Moving on. This is an award presented to my father after his passing. Uh, it is from the, it is from NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and I'll read it to you. It is the Distinguished Public Service Medal, and underneath it says, for distinguished service to the nation and the human race in presenting the exploration of space as an exciting frontier and a hope for, and a hope for the future. Uh, I can't read the name, uh, but it was presented by the administrator to him, and I believe that's Oh, uh, who was that guy? He was, I know him. Yeah, I don't know. The guy that was the administrator of NASA during uh, Clinton's reign. Okay. Moving on, this is a print by Michael David Ward. And let me apologize for the poor lighting in here. There's a number of light bulbs that are out, so I, I apologize for the, the bad, bad look. This is a painting by Michael David Ward. Michael David Ward was one of my father's favorite artists, and he certainly is mine. He's also a good friend, and not only that, he's a, a great, great, great guy. Um, he always combined uh, a space with 
the I don't know, ecology, the ocean. I mean, a lot of his, I guess, earlier pieces had a lot of uh, ocean life and space, and these are two killer whales. And uh, I don't know the name of this piece, but um, I have a number of Mike's pieces, and I highly recommend that anyone who's interested go to michaeldavidward.com. He's got some fantastic stuff, and he's extremely diverse. He does all sorts of work. Moving over to here is this was the... Uh, what is it, the Rose Bowl Parade in Pasadena? This, I'm not sure when this was done. I can't remember, but um, a, a group got together and they did a next generation float, which I think is fantastic. Uh, moving on. Now, you know, I've heard the story. This is something my father loved. This is a basically a, a three foot or almost four foot by four foot um, ship uh, constructed with so much detail. I believe it's a British ship. If I'm not mistaken, it was named the Enterprise. Now, I don't know if this was based off a real ship that existed or something imaginary that someone came up with, but my father loved this and had the case built for it. Uh, up top is my father's star, the dedication plaque for his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And uh, it says presented to Gene Roddenberry on the occasion of placement of your star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, September 4th, 1985. And behind him is a little stuffed creature that you can't see, and my father called it Idic uh, for his philosophy of infinite diversity in infinite combinations. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. We've got a model of the Enterprise, and moving around... A lot of this stuff has changed, but I don't know where my father got this. This is a Klingon face mask. I, I, I don't know. I've never looked at the back of it. I don't. I can't get it. Okay, I can't get it off the wall. Oh wow. Okay, never mind. It's gonna stay there. And uh, you know, let me show you his desk essentially. Um, this desk was custom made. And you, you walk in the door, you come around it, and you sit in the chair there. And um, my father had a different chair at the time, and no TV, and I don't think he even had a computer at the time. But uh, he, he did a lot of work in here for the next generation, and I, I do remember him often sitting here, thinking, talking, speaking on the phone. Anyhow, I wanted to show you that little glimpse of, of my father's life and my father's world. Uh, I actually wanted to mention something else to you guys. Uh, I was thinking of something, actually, just the other day when I was going to put this together. Let me get a better picture here, better, some better light. Oh, you guys are going to get sick, aren't you? You know, the idea of tolerance has been something I've thought about for a long time.